Hello, everybody. Welcome to Rat Sound Review. This is album versus album. Hello. 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 <laughs> Can't believe you guys got on board with that. You like a lot of cheesy stuff. I, I can't even say that because I like some cheesy stuff too. What? That's one of the best songs I've ever heard. I was forced to listen to the debut for this album's album, and I was impressed. I feel like the title track is a little weak, honestly. Am I going to get crucified for saying this? Yeah. Nope. Please get me off this fucking program. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and with that, dog, man, it's your what? My one eyed dog. He's got one eye? Yeah. What's his name? <laughs> oh. What happened to his eye? Uh, I don't know. What happened to her eye? Uh, she's she didn't have a tear duct. Oh, really? Wow. So he just took her eye out. Yep, just uh, fuck it. Thick guy. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> With that, welcome to Album vs. Album. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. Hey. It's been a How long time. You? I'm doing good. It's been like two weeks since we had a show. Yes. Yes, it has been. And the masses have been clamoring. They have been. I've been getting email after email after email saying, where is my new episode? And I said, gotta wait for it. Right. Anticipation. That's right. What are we doing today? Doing King Cobra, Ready to Strike versus Rough Cut's debut self-titled album. Wait, we're doing what? Oh, we're not. What are we doing? The King fuck? Cobra's Ready to Strike versus Rough Cut self titled. Oh, shit. I, I listened oh. to fucking. I thought we were doing Insane Clown Posse. Yeah, oh, yeah. Very the funny. new cool album, I think I take ICP, to be honest. That new cool <laughs> album blows. It made me want to. Seriously. You don't Anyways, like that's. Cool, huh? I, uh, I got an email from somebody that would like us to talk about it, but I'm not a Tool fan. But you are a Tool. Not as much as you, New Yorker. Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. Sibling rivalry. I'd go back and forth with you, but I don't want to snow below the show. Oh! No, but we could bum rush the show. What is that shirt? Yeah. Bark at the Moon? Yeah. Bark at the moon. Nice. What the hell are you wearing? Oh, uh, Wendy, Wendy Williams, right? Yep. Oh. Nice. I'm just wearing Pac Man. Fits today's show. All right. Who wants to go first? Since these are your picks, uh, Saxon, you want to just give us some brief. Uh, backstory about King Cobra. King Cobra, uh, fronted by the world's greatest rock drummer, Carmine Apice, or Carmine Apice. Really depends on what day he wants to say his name. I've heard it both ways. Um, uh, lead singer was Mark Free, who turned into Marcy Free in the 90s. Uh, you probably have heard that story. Really? Yep. Really? yep. Johnny Rod, the bassist, went on to Wasp. Uh, Mike, Mark Sweeney, I believe, went to Bullet Boys. Uh, um, and David Michael Phillips, he did something else I can't remember. RC Free. Why does that name sound familiar? Well, it's one of the few I know why. lists that uh, went from a man to a woman. Yes, and she, and he, she, he is the also the vocalist for Unruly Child. Unruly Child, exactly. That's why the name sounded familiar to me. I like them, they're pretty cool. Pretty uh, good. Yeah, they're Actually, a good band. yeah, similar to uh, King Cobra. In a yeah. way. They just came out with a new album about two months ago. Yeah, they did. Mm. Oh, somebody's got a message. That's actually uh, sideshow. 
you guys remember yeah, Sideshow? Yeah, I was going to say Tosh just tagged us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. I thought his voice sounded very familiar, too. So, yeah, no wonder why I like this album. Oh, good. You like one of my picks, huh? I do. I like this album very, very much. Tell us about it. I pretty much like every song except uh, Attention. I just don't like, I don't think it really goes anywhere. I don't like the chorus too much. Doesn't uh, doesn't catch my fancy. But uh, so, so much catch. It's a show opener kind of song, you know. That's what? It's more of a show opener kind of song where they come on stage. We're going to get your attention. Yeah, yeah, that's why I don't like it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, every other song, I mean, there's just so many great choruses and catchy fucking melodies and stuff in every song. It's just, um, it's good stuff. Like the, the opening track, I love the intro. You know, a lot of bands don't do intros anymore. But, uh, you know, back in this time they did. That's a great chorus. The song Hunger, great chorus. There's a um, uh, a part in after the chorus in, in Hunger that sounds like Judas Priest Grinder. I don't know if you guys kind of uh, felt that way. Yeah. Sure. Just a little yeah, tiny little piece. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 Uh, Shadow Rider. That's just a little bit of a slower song with another catchy chorus. Uh, Shake Up's got some good melody, isn't it? And actually, that song kind of sounds like it may, maybe it could be like a rainbow song. <coughs> Shake Up. Right. Like a you know later rainbow, not like early rainbow. Not 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 Dio. Yeah, not Dio rainbow. Uh, Breaking Out is cool. Sounds mostly like a Motley Crue song in the chorus. I don't know if you guys realized uh, that, too. Uh, Tough Guys, which uh, I talked about that earlier with Greg. Uh, That could be like a Journey song. I hate that song. (laughs) (laughs) Starts off with some real nice guitar lines and then just goes to crap after the first minute of it. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, I really like dancing with the de- desire. Just that acoustic guitar. There's like no drums, nothing in it. I love a lot of melodies in that song. I love that. That's really cool. And uh, second thoughts. I really think you should um, listen to Pretty Maids again because this sounds almost like a Pretty Maids song. Okay. Actually, this whole thing kind of sounds like a Pretty Maids song. I'm shocked that when we did that Pretty Maids show, you guys didn't like Pretty Maids. Pretty maids are like Danish or some shit, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and piece of the rock, eh? It's okay. It's a '80s rock anthem song, and it's all right. But all in all, I love this album. One of my favorites. Roll, cool man. Yeah. This is the first time you've heard it. Yeah, I've heard of the name King Cobra. I've seen the album cover and everything, but I just never looked more into them. Nice. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you picked them. Sweet. Good picks. Dragon. What about you, Dragon? I like the record. It's okay. Um, but before I forget, so Hunger, which is actually my favorite song from this, but uh, was written by members of Kick Axe and was recorded by Kick Axe under the name of Spectre General for the original Transformers soundtrack in the 80s. Oh, really? And that's how I first heard that song. Wow. Didn't know. Great song, though. Cool video. Um, <clears throat> the only track I really don't like on it is just Tough Guys. The rest of it's good. It's just... Kind of mediocre hair metal. Doesn't really do anything special. It just sounds like Quiet Riot. It's better than Quiet Riot. But with a much better drummer. (laughs) Yeah. Way better drummer. It's better than Quiet Riot, though. Come on. I I don't know. Frank Benali's pretty top-notch. He's not Carmine. No doubt about it. Frank Benali's a good fucking drummer. He is. Oh, yeah. I, I don't have a problem with Frankie. I'm just saying Carmine's a better drummer. I think the rhythm section is stronger in King Cobra. Yeah. So what's the uh, Quiet Riot King Cobra connection? Well, Spencer Proffer produced this and wrote a few songs for it, who also did Metal Health and uh, Condition Critical. And I can't remember if he was involved in QR3 or if, or if that was strictly DeBrow's idea, but I think that's what makes this album a little weak. Uh, Spencer Proffer got lucky a couple a couple times with Quiet Riot and I just his influence usually kind of ruins the albums a little bit. 
production's a little thin too. My uh, my physical tangible connection was Johnny Rod was in Wasp with Frankie Benali. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> See, I'm not a Quiet Riot fan, so I really don't know. I'm not up on Quiet Riot. Not enough noodling. No, <laughs> not even close. But um, <clears throat> if maybe if uh, Randy Rhodes stayed in the band, then yes. But no, you like a few songs, what? Yeah, I mean, it, it's worth getting <clears throat> just for ready to strike, hunger, breaking out, and dancing with desire alone. Yeah, it's just uh, the rest of the songs on it aren't really that strong. I mean. They always manage to keep it rocking and entertaining with the rhythm and the guitar lines. It's just a lot of it doesn't really stand out to me. Wow. Well, I love this fucking album. It's a, that's a mainstay from my youth. I got to see them open for Autograph in 85 when Autograph was on their tune up, turn up the radio, you know, pipe. And uh, got the get backstage, meet the guys, had Johnny Rod sign Roger's shoe. He had Roger, his Dragon's roommate, had size 15 shoes, and so there's plenty of space for Johnny Rod to write his whole name on it. <laughs> you know? And uh, that was on my wall of fame for years and years. <clears throat> Who knows where the hell that went, but uh, yeah, I, I just got good memories of uh, seeing them, and they've just uh, been one of those bands that I've Watched all the members go do different projects, and now they're back together, minus Marcy Free, and um, the lead singer in King Cobra now is the lead singer from the next album that we're going to review. Oh, but, really? Uh, the only thing oh, I've uh, got to say is that's the whole King Cobra Rough Cut connection there. He it's also Paul sang Chino. for Quiet Riot. <laughs> and he did, too. Exactly. <laughs> so... Yeah, I, I love Ready to Strike, their second album, Thrill of a Lifetime, is a piece of shit. But uh, King Cobra 3 is the actual King Cobra album that I love more than anything. I, that album just rocks from head to foot. I was going to say, that's about that one. the one I really like as well. Yeah. I'm going to have to put that on here then. I don't, put yeah, both don't even bother with Thrill of a Lifetime. It's They try rapping, and it's just <laughs> it's horrendous. Really? If you didn't yeah. like Piece of the Rock, you won't like thrill of a lifetime because it's basically you could see where they were going with piece of the rock <laughs> all right i will download three though sounds interesting yeah definitely love it and it was uh there was a big um gene simmons connection with king cobra three i don't know what did he, did he produce it or something dragon i can't even remember um... there's a couple of things, uh gene simmons songs on there yeah, I think it's a couple of his songs. Let me... Uh... Yeah, Legends Never Die and It's My Life. Yeah, yeah, both songs that uh, they had previously done on uh, Wendy O. Williams' solo record. Yeah. Uh, there is no... I don't have it on this Amazon app, but I'll look for it somewhere else. Or maybe you could send it to me. Yeah, I could send it to you. Well, yeah, so, uh, yeah, good album. I really like it, and I'm glad you showed it to us. Sweet. All right. Good night, everybody. See you. See you later. Rough cut. <laughs> Rough cut. Uh, 85, I think. I turned the page. Um, yeah. That was a band discovered by Ronnie James Deal. Um, I think he had something to do with the production. I don't look up this, this shit. You know that. I just wing it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it. It wasn't Ronnie. It was Wendy. Was it Wendy? Yeah. I know that uh, everybody knows it's Wendy. Rough Cut, rough cut did a whole like year long tour with Dio when that first yeah. Rough Cut album came out, and uh, they got a lot of fans out of it. Obviously, uh, Paul Shortino is one of my three all time favorite singers. Um, I think it's a, an amazing. It's it's a. I can't even really call it a metal album. It's so bluesy and and weird, and it's got such different tempos and um it's very unique for that time period mm. yeah there's a lot of cool stuff on it uh anything else you want to add uh other than paul shortino's god check him some, out 
Is he in something else? Because his, his name sounds familiar to me, too. Yeah, he was in Quiet Riot. He did uh, the QR album. Um, is, is he the guy that was in Quiet Riot for like a week or something? Or is that somebody else? Well, they did a whole great album together. Right. They got a whole thing and going on right now, Quiet Riot. He's uh, done a bunch of solo stuff. Uh, he was done a couple of uh, albums with uh, J.K. Northrup, who's a underappreciated guitarist. Mm. Good stuff. It's all good stuff. It's, it's a voice. Yeah. And now they just uh, got together with, uh, well, I guess it's been a year now, but part of Rough Cut and part of Quiet Riot got together and did a band called Rough Riot, and they did some shows in Vegas. I don't know if they're ever going to record anything, but it would be cool if they did. Huh. And now Paul Shertino's the uh, singer for King Cobra, and they put out a couple albums with him on vocals. That's interesting. Yeah. Because he's got more of a grittier, grittier voice than uh, Marcy Free has. Oh, yeah, for sure. So That's I'll have what to I check like that out. out. I'll have to check that out. Um, Rough Cut, I don't know. I don't like it as much as King Cobra. It's a decent album. It's got a better production than uh, King Cobra did. But uh, I don't like that uh, Janis Joplin cover song. I don't like that song in general. I just hate that song. Uh, Never Gonna Die. I like the, ca- the chorus in there. Sort of reminds me like of a Twisted Sister song. In a way. It's got like a Twisted Sister feel to it. His vocals kind of sound like Dee Snider. Just a tad bit. <laughs> Yeah, I can I can get that in the back of my head, sure. Okay. Uh, Dreaming Again, that's a pretty good ballad. Uh, not crazy about Cut Out Your Heart. Reminds me a little bit of um, like how Queen Queen's uh, Stone Cold Crazy. I mean, it's a cool song, but it's like kind of like all over the place, and this kind of feels like that same kind of thing. It's a decent song, but it's just, I don't know, it's just something about it. Um, the rest of the album is oh, kind of... Is- as far as his metal vocals go, I think "Cut Your Heart Out" is the, the coolest it, metal song it, he ever did. But yeah, it is. It's the most metal song on his album. Yeah. You know, it's 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 uh, you know the wildest song on the album. But uh, I don't know. The rest of the album's okay. Black Widow's decent, but eh, not too much else really kept my attention as much as the other album did. I don't think there's as much catch, catchy things. You know, I'm all about catchy melodies and all that crap. And I don't know. It's missing some of that stuff on this. But it's not a bad album. I do like it. But it's just not uh, catchy enough for me. It, it failed to deliver on the on the uh, chorus stuff. What about you, Dragon? Uh, I El like Dragon. this one. Uh, I like pa- Paul Shortino much, much more than I like Marcy Free. The vocals are way better on this record. I also <sighs> think the production's better too. The band sounds a lot fuller on this. Some real nice, chunky uh, sound to the guitars. Um, I like pretty much the whole album. I'm not a fan of that Joplin cover either. I like the Joplin version of the song, but I'm just not a fan of when people try to cover stuff. I don't like when Fastway did it with Move Over either. And uh, the ballad, I can't stand. Don't like Never Gonna Die or Dream It Again. But the rest of the album is great. Cut Your Heart Out of Black my two favorite songs from it. Interesting. Yeah. Very. Black Widow is a nice bluesy I'd say it's metal song. Yeah. Shortino really, really, really belts it out on Black Widow too. He yeah, he does. Brings it on he, that uh, song. He does some really cool stuff with his voice on here depending on the song. Like even though I don't like Never Gonna Die his vocals are great on that. Yeah, he's got a good voice. I like it. I just like I said before, I wish there was more catchier things on this album. But I like the more uh, like uh, Marcy Free kind of vocals. But I like both. I, I like gritty stuff. I like you know. So, what are we ranking this? Hold on a second. One little uh, nugget. Yeah, um, sure. Give us a nugget. The guitarist and the guitarist in Rough Cut. I want to say Amir Dakar or something. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. He was in a band in the 90s called Orgy, if you remember them. Yes. They yeah, did a cover of Blue Monday. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, big yeah. Change, okay. Big change in style for that guy right there. Wow. So, yeah, I just thought I'd throw that nugget, nugget in there. <laughs> God, I hated that band. Yeah, I was, I was unimpressed. 
Yeah, no good. And no good. That was the best song on the album, and that song sucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not like that at all. Definitely was not into that stuff during that time of period. Period of time, whatever. I'm fucking exhausted right now. <laughs> I'm also oh, dyslexic. Are <laughs> what? Are you all sweaty? No, it's not hot out. So. Oh. And uh, I looked it up. Ronnie actually did co-write uh, Take Her with them. Okay. And that's a great song. That's a killer opener. I can definitely see Dio being a part of that. And Shortino was on the hearing aid thing. So oh, yeah. He had a big actual, uh, uh, his own uh, piece of that music. You know, how they sliced it up between all the singers and... Short, you know, nobody knew who the hell he was at the time, but he, he was buds with Dio, and Dio said, here, have a line. You know, it's funny, the uh, King Cobra sounds more like Dio to me than the Rough Cut does. I had a lot more Dio influences on that uh, King Cobra. I don't know about all that. It sounds closer to more something like Rat well, or Sunset Strip maybe, than Dio. Maybe, be, maybe because Carmine, Carmine of Peace is on the uh, King Cobra album. Because he was, was with Ozzy. Wasn't he with Dio? No, he wouldn't know. That was Ozzy's drummer. Yeah. I quit. I quit this show. Yeah, Carmine was little... Ozzy's drummer. Vinny was Dio's drummer. Yeah. Oh, his brother. <laughs> Don't they hate each other? No. No, I thought they did. Boy, I'm just full of wrong information tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's typical. Life well, should be like any other night. No, it shouldn't be. I'm usually the one that's always wrong, so that's just an inside joke, people. Oh, and uh, this Rough Cut album was actually produced by Tom Alam, who was work, uh, working oh, with yeah. Priest throughout all the 80s. Right on. Yep. All right, so what are, we, what are we giving this album? Uh, all right, Greg, you go first. Go ahead. Are you going to give it an M for Mediocre? Oh, well, they definitely get rated <laughs> M for mediocre at best, but uh, I'd give the rough cut a seven and a half, and the King Cobra, I can't go any higher than a six. It's average. That's not bad, though. That's good. That's good. I give the uh, King Cobra an eight, and I give, what the hell did I do with the other one? Uh, shit. Five for rough cut. I wish I could rate the rough cut higher, but the songs I don't like, I just really hate. Sorry, go ahead, Saxon. <laughs> I give them both 8.5s. I, co- I couldn't pick between the two if I had to. Huh. Interesting. So, so King Cobra wins. Yep. By point. King Cobra is the winner. You win nothing. <laughs> But what you there people, you, you people watching, what you win is, uh, well, you don't win anything either. But go check out those albums because they're actually really good, and you will enjoy them. That's right. Uncle Saxon approved. That's right. You know we have a podcast too, so when you nod your head, nobody hears that. Oh well. Wow. You, you think all the rattling could come through somehow, right? Oh, that's what that was. Yeah. That's somebody shaking a paint can. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> wow. I sh- I'm gonna, you know what I'm going to do? I'll give, I'll give you that one. Right. Watch the, watch the uh, replay of this on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, all right, anything else to add? J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. You like the Jets? Oh, I like the Jets. I'm a huge Jets fan. <laughs> you hate a, a dog, don't. <laughs> you hate everything East Coast, but you like the Jets. Uh, Jets. Just because of Namath and, and CC Rider, CC and Company. I'm not a football fan, so I don't give a shit either way. But it's just strange. All right. To me. All right. Well. Uh, please go visit our website www.ratsaladreview.com Is something fucking going on over there? I'm trying to fucking give the outro to our show. What's more important? Does she got fucking something to say? Does the dog got something to say? What? 
<laughs> I got my eye on you. Uh, what's the dog's name again? Tessa. Tessa. Right. Tessa the Messa. <laughs> All Tessa right. the one-eyed Messa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Rats out review. Be, be, blah, 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 blah. Reverse that. Rats out review dot com. Uh, also, subscribe to our YouTube. Uh, iTunes, uh, Stitcher, all that nonsense. And also, go check out the Hameen Media Group, who we are sponsors of. And we had somebody on from the Hameen Media Group uh, a couple of days ago, which that episode will air. Well, that episode's going to be on before this even airs, so don't even worry about that. But let's just thank, and- <laughs> thank Andrew for coming on, since that airs uh, a couple of days before this episode. But, cool uh, yeah. guy. Very cool guy. And hopefully we're going to go on his show. So... And actually, after, when this show airs, we'll have, we will have been on one of their shows uh, called The Impact Attack. And you can watch that. So I'm sure that was fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so go find all their uh, media, uh, Hot Mean Media Group. Uh, you can find I it on... Like you're on, trying uh, to sell used cars over there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah. Podbean.com, Han Media Group. I don't know how you look that up, but they're on iTunes. Uh, every, everything. You just search uh, Han Mean Media Group on uh, Google. You'll find them. They're everywhere. Wrestling, conspiracy stuff, uh, whatever you want. They have it. Whatever you want to listen to. They don't have... Well, they do have some people with tattoos, but they don't really do videos, so... Yeah. Bye! Bye! Bye-bye, everybody. Say you bye.